folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Guess what? Today's Halloween. <laughs> yep, I'm going to go to a Halloween party with my friend. And I'm going to dress up in my Halloween costume. I'm not going to guess what it is because I already know. But however, I am going to review one horror film for today alone. And surprisingly enough, I just bought it yesterday at Walmart for only $6.50. Got that along with uh, Donnie Darko. Yeah, I'm going to review that someday. Maybe later. <laughs> but it's a movie that came out on August 15, 1986. And it happens to be a remake of the 1958 uh, original classic. Yep, I'm talking about The Fly. David Cronenberg's The Fly, that is. Yep, a movie about... A brilliant scientist is being interviewed by a journalist from a magazine who wants up inside these tripods that he created only to discover that a housefly went inside the machine and he will soon become, as we know it, a fly. Or at this rate, bundle fly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is of course the Blu-ray release that came out in 2007. It has the same cover art as the previous DVD release. Yeah, the, the one with the picture of a fly, house fly. So that's really cool. And yep, it has all the extras on the set. Yeah, just like the previous release has. So that's cool. Uh, and the transfer of this movie looks excellent. Probably the best transfer that this movie had, had to offer. And it also comes with a limited collector's card which is right here looks exactly like a modernized version of the movie poster of the, tr the telepod that we saw right here but this time it has one that has a picture of Zepwondo already inside already becoming horribly disfigured because he will soon become as we know it the fly and the glass was breaking too Wow, this this looks awesome. I, I I'm glad they came up with this idea. It, lo it definitely looks a little better than this, but uh, what can you do? And it had a great cast, you know, with Jeff Goldblum, definitely the right choice to play the role. I mean, he's definitely the the brilliant role of all because he's been known for playing, you know, intelligent roles or any other kind. Because he was also in movies like The Big Chill, and um, also that movie. A horror comedy, which he did team up with Gina Davis too, came out a year earlier before this, called Transylvania Six Five Thousand. So I thought that was interesting that they both team up together for this one. They later went on to do another film together called uh, Earth Girls Are Easy, yeah, which was a comedy, of course. Yeah, he played the alien, yeah, one of the aliens, yeah, along with Jim Carrey and and Damon Wayans and uh, <laughs> and of course uh, Gina Davis plays a valley girl yeah. but this is the movie I remember watching when it aired on select TV back in 1987 uh, my father taped this movie uh, along with the other films he had on that one tape it had Stephen King's Silver Bullet you know one with Corey Haim and Gary Busey yeah, the, a movie about werewolves. And he also had uh, the comedy by John Landis called Trading Places with Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy. Yeah. I remember watching this movie and I remember how scared I was when I saw this. I I wouldn't believe how gruesome, gross out, dark, that I never soon forget. It's It's definitely right up there with his previous work scanners and video drone. Yeah, I mean Cronenberg definitely has the perfect touch for, to direct this movie. Yeah, he even wrote the screenplay you know, along with uh, Charles uh, Charles Edward Pogg. So yeah. Yeah, in fact they had to rewritten much of the material from his script in order to make this movie even better. So it has that touch. In fact, he even has a cameo role in this movie, too. So that's interesting. 
And not to mention, uh, Mel Brooks had produced this movie. Well, unfortunately his name was uncredited, but it was done by his production company. Yeah, because after all, Mel Brooks was responsible for doing all these spoof comedies as we know it. So this would be the first time that he ever produced a, <laughs> a sci-fi horror film that was a remake of the 1958 uh, original classic. And yeah, the one with Vincent Price, that is. And I love the original film, actually. The, it, it, I, I never forget the movie. I always remember the line, Help me! Help me! Yeah, when, when the scientists would later become, you know, the fly. Although they did have the line in the film too, you know, only he says it differently. And but I always remember the tagline, which is also in the film, when it says, "Be afraid. Be very afraid." Well, anyway, let, let's get to the film. Um, it stars Jeff Goldblum, Regina Davis, John Getz, who was in a film called uh, Blood Simple. The Corn Butters film. Joy Bushell, Leslie Carson, George Cervello, and David Cornenberg, who made a cameo appearance. It's written by Charles Edward Pogg and David Cronenberg, who is also the director of the film. The movie began setting the Meet the Press event at Bartok Science Industries where we see a journalist from the Particle magazine named Veronica Crawford, who's played by Gina Davis, who winds up interviewing a brilliant but eccentric scientist named Seth Bundle, who's played by Jeff Goldblum. Seth later took uh, Veronica to his warehouse where he was creating his latest invention the telepods, yeah, which he built all three of them. Although he had to use two of them for, for another testing supply, where he decided to use uh, one object and it could be teleported from another telepod. So, yes, um, the test was that he used uh, any certain object at this rate, uh, Veronica's stocking nylon stocking just to test it out and it actually teleports to the other pod yep and that's where you see all the the fog shooting up from the telepod and there you have it <laughs> I mean, she thought it was a hologram at first but it was just what it was so then he started to do some more experiments by actually uh, using a lot of different objects such as using the stake yep just to, to see the difference between the one that's cooked and the one that was already teleported to, to see the difference so it actually thinks that the computer is not as smart as, as you could see and they, they knew the difference between what's what's not good and what's the other one good well before that happened we Seth decided to use a baboon monkey just to see if this would work but unfortunately that alone failed because it doesn't uh, work properly on living things because what happened was when the baboon monkey enters the telepod for some reason it turns inside out um, very gruesome having to see that scene and that scene got to me completely although that wasn't the only scene that got to me there's more. <laughs> Seth and Veronica soon began a romantic relationship with each other, so they had their first sexual encounter, providing an inspiration for Seth, who actually programs the telepod you know, to cope with uh, living creatures. You know, they started doing some interviews. They had to film everything. Unfortunately, you know, they didn't want to reveal any of the secrets behind it because because they'll soon become as we know it. So, that leads to bigger problems because Veronica has her relationship with her editor and former lover, 
Stead is Borans, who's played by John Getz. Even Borans, you know, you know, couldn't get along with this whole story because all considering that Veronica's, you know, so obsessed with this idea of the telepods and everything that will soon become big, it just leaves him completely mad thinking that he he's a con artist, you know, for Seth Brundle that is. Yeah, at first, but then it gets even worse. Because soon, between all of this had started to happen, Seth suddenly felt drunk, angry, and completely jealous. That he decided to, to, to teleport himself in Veronica's absence. I guess because she's aware of not doing the experiment with him, just to see if this will happen. But, so he decided he'll do the, the project himself, only one problem. He was very unaware that a common housefly had slipped into the transmitter pod in, already inside with him. He emerges from the receiving pod just as brilliantly normal as, as we assume. So everything was successful because I know, um, you know, he did brought in another baboon monkey to see if, if this would work. Yeah, this was, of course, his brother. It did work. And things were doing so well. But then we now begin to find out that while Seth and Veronica are reconciled shortly after his teleportation, Seth suddenly became exhibited by his um, what seems to be a beneficial effects of the process. So, in other words, he's becoming more stronger, having increased stamina, and sexual potentials and suddenly all this teleportation process uh, purifies his entire body so now he's becoming as we know it you know more um, obsessed he's, he's getting you know too excited for it he felt like he, he never thought he he never come more alive than ever before he's like he's just as he's as powerful as ever yeah and that alone is what causes him to become a complete maniac. So Seth, of course, wound up going back to the telepods to actually bring Veronica along with her to, to test her out. Unfortunately, she was afraid, and she didn't want to do that. So unfortunately, that, that leads Seth to become very frustrated, becoming more arrogant and angry as ever before. So yeah, he calls her chicken shit, and and she's and already furious with jealousy. He wants to go into a local bar, and wants up having an arm wrestling match between that one tough guy who was already arm wrestling with with his uh, best friend at this point. Not to mention he had to offer him a hundred dollars, be able to have casual sex. Uh, with a woman named um, Tawny, who's played by Joy Bushell. Anyway, when he and this is the scene that also got to me was when he was arm wrestling with that guy, and all of a sudden, when he was doing that, you notice that his his palm, already handled by his uh, arm, was soon started to um, squeeze out uh, all that sweat, which at this rate should be the acid as we know it and once he was trying to move his arm all the way all the way down suddenly it, le it leaves his arm with a compound fracture which actually opens up a hole on his arm and all that blood started to come right out too I mean Jesus Christ I mean that scene really got to me I, I felt sorry for that guy too after that happened so then he soon um, took Tawny all the way up to his warehouse. Yeah, because unfortunately they had to walk a couple blocks. And yeah, he took her in his arms, trying to go all the way up stairs. And he was like running as fast as he can. It's like, wow. And he decided to show uh, her um, his telepod, you know, just to try it out for the second time around. So he... So he's getting it even better, but unfortunately, that's even worse. His face was already changing. 
you know, looking more, you know, uglier than ever before. He started to smell bad, and, and then that's when he noticed he's all of his fingers and started to squirt out you know, all that acid that's coming from, right from it. And yep, yeah, I mean, it, all his nails was coming right off too. I mean, once he was biting on his nails, yeah, he tried to shave, so it, he knew something bad was going to happen. But he also felt also angry because just when the you know Veronica was actually warning him that since he had those wounds on his back mostly because of the yeah he was having sex with Veronica and, and that uh, computer chip got stuck in his back they soon started growing in hairs on his back and it turned out to be not human so it might be as we know it insect hairs so now, so now he knows that uh, something extremely wrong was about to happen when he found out that the fly actually did went inside the telepod while he was in it. So now he finally found out that he soon becomes, as we know it, a bundle fly. So it gets even worse because soon after four weeks or so, maybe even more, he soon starts to change uh, very rapidly. You know, first he couldn't walk. He had to walk in the canes. He soon had to use some gloves to cover his hands. And suddenly, uh, his ears started falling off. All of his body parts were starting to fall right off. First, he started vomiting. All the foods, yeah, where it reveals all that acid. Yeah, I mean, he's... He's really starting to become as we know it. It's it's scary. I mean, he started moving around, you know, crawling around um, on the roof. Everything. And that also leads to another problem too. Was that Veronica is actually pregnant? She'll soon be able to have the son of what seems to be Seth Brundle's. Yeah, which I know that's going to lead to the second movie. You know, The Fly Two. But let's get to that. So unfortunately, she wanted to have an abortion. Yeah, she tries to do that, but unfortunately, Seth wants up coming in to her life, and 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 they they both escape. While well, Bornance was actually going after them, he was ready to find out his warehouse and trying to find where where Seth and Veronica are. But then suddenly, Seth came and you know who was already about to. Uh, attack uh, Burrans you know, by spewing out uh, vomit on his hand and it started to melt all that blood it was already melting completely and then after that he actually uh, you know vomits um, his uh, right uh, foot yep it's it started to melt too so he can't uh, move his left arm and his right uh, leg as we know it so yeah that's going to be a problem for him but he soon tries to stop um, Seth and Veronica just just as Seth was about to uh, put uh, Veronica inside the telepod so that way they could both uh, merge together so in order for him to become human again yeah you know for for her baby too yeah, that seems to fail because unfortunately she didn't want to do this. Yeah, she he knocked uh, his jaw out and he became, as we know it, a fly as he transforms. Yeah. And he was just about to go inside the telepod just as soon as Burrance tried to stop him by using the shotgun and shooting at the, the parts. And, of course, instead of her, you know, he gets teleported into the next one and and sadly um, Veronica then took the shotgun and, and just shot him anyway in the head and explodes and yeah and then the movie ends and yeah that was probably the saddest ending that we ever had for this movie and it, it's um it's basically what it was a masterpiece um, Cronenberg's masterpiece at this point. It, it works so well. Uh, it, it was very well made. It definitely has the feel of what the 1958 film did, but I think 
they really improve everything by instead of using the, your traditional one you just get uh, more uh, gross out scenes uh, such as all these uh, blood and gory uh, effects that he has because he's been doing that a lot since those two films scanners and and video drones so he was definitely the right choice to do so and I, I, I just couldn't believe how memorable those scenes were um, Jeff Goldblum was definitely the right choice to play the role I mean this is the the kinda actor who can actually play you know nerdy uh, geek type of roles he's like the the scientist that's, that's so brilliant that he he actually talks fast I mean he's definitely uh, a fast talker but he's always been a great actor and I, I always love him in several of the films he's been in you know, including Jurassic Park you know, Earth Girls Are Easy and as well as other films like Transylvania 6 by Thousand which you know, he stars along with Gina Davis you know and The Big Chill the right stuff he was also uh, one of the bad guys in the movie Death Wish he was very young at the time. Yeah. Um, definitely one of my favorite actors. Gina Davis, uh, let's face it, she was hot, sexy, beautiful, um, a very great actress. You know, actually, as far as I'm concerned, um, Jeff Goldblum and uh, Gina Davis both got married uh, in 1987, but that didn't last that long. So, so that that's cool because I knew they were going to work together as a team to do free movies. So wow, that that was interesting. Um, from what I read, but I I thought they were a great couple, and they they both spark chemistry together. It, it, it works. And John Getz, um, who's been best known for his role in Blood Simple. He was very good as uh, Status Borans, even though he was sort of a jerk at first. I mean, yeah, he was sort of a jerk after all. He was indeed uh, Veronica's boyfriend, and and he's the editor, and, and he knew that something's going wrong, as far as, as we know it. And, yep, it pretty much has everything that the movie was going for. I mean... And all the um, the creature effects that they did with the fly and all of that was actually done by makeup effects artist uh, Chris Wallace, who was the creator behind uh, movies like Gremlins. Yeah, because I could see how the creature effects really look like. And he also teamed up with makeup artist Stephen Duplass. Yep, and they both won the Academy Award uh, for Best Makeup Effects of the Fly. And I gotta say, they definitely earned an Oscar for that because it was amazing. Uh, scary. Um, oh man, and just awesome. I mean, let's face it. This movie will never be forgotten. It would always be remembered by... I mean, I know people remember the 1958 film, but I think this movie deserves its recognition. And that's how it is, you know, under his name. I know Cronenberg um, wanted to do uh, a second remake, although originally the second remake uh, was actually done originally by, uh, well, what seemed to be, it was going to be by uh, Todd Lincoln. And also, uh, Renny Harlan was going to do an alternate sequel to it, which I think that would have been cool if he did uh, with, with um, his then wife, uh, Gina Davis. But even David Cronenberg was starting to come up with something new for the film. You know, he was going to do his version, a, a second remake, although technically it was just going to be a sequel. But uh, unfortunately, you know, all of this was just rumored. But even if he tries to do it, I hope he can do something different, and not some, and not just remake it out of the 1986 film because. This is the best film that he ever had to offer. So I don't know. I mean, because I'm having some problems with that too. Because nowadays, today's remakes just suck. And that alone is what bothers me the most about that. So who knows. But we already did have a sequel to this movie. 
that alone, and it follows it. It was the one with, with Eric Stoltz and Daphne Seninga, you know, from Spaceballs. And John Getz uh, made an appearance in this movie, too, called The Fly 2. Yeah. Yeah, where uh, Eric Stoltz plays uh, Seth Wendell's son. Yeah. And I, I thought he did a great job in that film, too. And, and to be honest, I, I thought The Fly 2 wasn't so bad at all. I thought... This was sort of a, an interesting improvement from the, the first movie, which is the remake, of course. And a, not to mention, um, Chris Wallace uh, directed the film, since he was responsible for, for doing the, the makeup effects. He also had four writers to do this movie, most of which had went on to direct a lot of movies. Yep, he had Frank Darabont to, as one of the writers, I'm, I'm surprised to know. And... He even got Mick Garris, too. So, wow. <laughs> I mean, who would have thought you would have um, all these, um, you know, all four writers who would soon become, you know, famous for all their work and it shows. Also, uh, the score was done very well and very uh, orchestrated by uh, Howard Shore, who also performed with uh, the London Philharmonic orchestra yeah because all all the the uh, the music that we heard in the movie it's like you just want to go to like a music hall and listen to one of the most chilling um, orchestrated uh, music that you want to put up with and it works so well for this movie because it definitely has that feel especially in the main title too when I saw the the opening where they they show the title screen where it says the fly yeah, the one that they showed in the trailers and TV spots. Yeah, I mean, you never forget that, that title line. You know, all that flashiness that they put in. Also, another scary scene in the film was when, uh, which is actually uh, Veronica's nightmare, was when she was about to have her baby, and you know, she was giving birth, until all of a sudden, a giant maggot had appeared. Oh, wow. I mean, and that was scary, too. I mean, imagine that. A giant uh, maggot. <sighs> wow. Never forget all these ghost out scenes. And the transitions, too, from from a normal human being that Seth Bolendo had looked, all the way till he became, as we know it, the fly. It's just... Yeah, it, it, it's just really something. And, yeah, I, I mean, I would definitely recommend this movie. It's a fun film, but very scary. And you just can't forget it. So anyway, I give The Fly, the 1986 version, five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. And, of course, Happy Halloween. Bye.